Hello. Welcome to the first episode of the Pretty Ugly podcast. My name is Jen Ives. I'm a London-based stand-up comedian and generally adorable trans woman. That's what everybody says. I'm just trying to live my best life in this crazy world of ours. Um, So this podcast is a sort of audio diary following my journey through getting cosmetic surgery. Uh, In upcoming episodes, I'll be chatting candidly with friends and family about me going under the knife and hopefully talking with people who have already done so. There might even be a few fellow comics popping up here and there. If you're lucky, I don't know. Basically, I've wanted to have certain procedures done for years, but for a few reasons, I've sort of put it off until very, very recently when I just sort of, I don't know, I just sort of kind of decided that enough was enough, right? I think there's a lot of reasons why I've put it off, but I'm hoping that this podcast is going to help me to sort of analyse them a little bit better and kind of have more of an understanding as as to why exactly. I can tell you one of the main reasons why I did was obviously the financial. Um, I'm not exactly rolling in it, you know, I'm not doing bad, but I'm not, I, I certainly don't have the kind of lifestyle that where I can just like fork out loads of money for, for a nip and a tuck here and there. Um, so I have to be very choosy about what kind of surgeries I'm going to have. And because I am a, tra- a trans person, um, I feel like the one, the surgeries that I want to have, they're, they're very much dependent on helping me with that. Now, I know you're probably wondering, oh, I wonder what surgeries those are. It might, I bet it's something to do with uh, the the private parts. Well, you know, that would be a fair guess, but it's actually wrong. Unless you consider the boobs a private part, um, which I suppose they sort of are. But, you know, then it's not the private part. The other reason I think I've put off having surgery for so long is purely because I'm a bit scared of it, you know. It's a bit like going on a plane, you know. When you go on an aeroplane, if you're not scared a little bit, you're probably a psychopath, aren't you? Because at the end of the day, that plane could come careening down into the ocean. Statistically, it won't, but they have before. Um, it might and hell if you you know here's the thing if you go on a plane and that crashes at least you get sort of like a meal first don't you you can have like chicken or fish or I'm sure they have a vegetarian option now nowadays there's political correctness gone mad um, I'm sure there's some kind of bean steak that you could have but if you die in the operating room um, you're going to die hungry because you're not even allowed to eat beforehand so even death row prisoners get a last meal, don't they? And surgery, I, I can't, I can't die under anaesthetic without having a pizza. You know, that would be my last meal that I would choose. Definitely a pizza. So yeah, I was, I'm scared of, of that as well. I'm definitely scared of, of dying in there. So yeah, for this first episode, it's mainly going to just be me talking. In fact, that is, that is what it's going to be. Uh, not mainly going to be, uh, it is going to be just that because, you know, I just had the idea for this podcast and I want to, I want to get it started. I want to get the ball rolling much in the same way as I did with my cosmetic surgery. You know, one day I woke up and I thought, Do you know what? Enough's enough. It's about time we got the ball rolling on this. Um, so I guess I'll just start by outlining my sort of plan. So I'll tell you where I, what stage I'm at. I'll tell you where I'm at with it. So I have contacted a couple of, um, a couple of, uh, what do you call them? Uh, <laughs> surgeries. That's that's the word. I was trying to think. It can't be that because that's what I'm having. But um, no, that is the name of the place. It's a surgery, isn't it? I hope it's a surgery. I hope it's not just like a some some <laughs> some office in in an undisclosed building uh, with a sort of ping pong table that they're going to lie me on and um, <laughs> and they <laughs> with a with a with a mat with loads of butter knives on it. I can't, I don't, I think that's a bad sign, isn't it? No, they're definitely a reputable couple of organisations. And so basically one of them has offered me a consultation over the web, a webcam consultation. Now I have been assured that it's not the only consultation I'll be having. It's sort of like their first initial consultation. So you can have a bit of a chat to chat. A chat to chat, that's not a, a face to face is a, a, what I meant. Chat to chat's not, not a word, is it? That's not a phrase. I'm just having a little chat to chat. 
Um, <laughs> although I might start using that in uh, in common parlance. It was funny actually when I was looking on the website. I went on the frequently asked questions and and like the first one was frequently asked questions. Will I have to get my boobs out <laughs> on webcam? No, you will not have to. Um, but they did stress that you don't have to. So I'm guessing that perhaps the option is there. So yeah, the stage that I'm at is, is that I have booked for my online consultation. And funnily enough, the date that they have given me is my birthday. And, you know, in a way, it feels quite like it was meant to be. It's like a sign, you know. And I think turning 30 definitely has something to do with it. You know, I do sometimes I have I do feel like I've been going through a little bit of a sort of an anxiety, maybe is the nice way of saying it. Um, the probably more truthful way to be saying it is probably like a complete fucking breakdown as I turn 30 thinking, oh, no, I haven't done this. I, I've, I'm I'm lonely. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm living at home again. Um, <laughs> I'm not where I want to be in my life. You know what? Look at what everyone's achieved around me. And on top of that, I'm ugly and I need <laughs> I need to start living my truth. Uh, I, I need to pull my finger out and, and <laughs> have someone uh, cut me up. Um, and I think turning 30 is really, I think it's triggered something in my brain, which says, you know, now is the time you're running out of time. You need to, you need to really face things head on. And you also, you need to start doing some things for yourself and, you know, get started. You know, 30 is very late to get started at life because I've gone through these phases before, right? This is kind of how I felt before I started transitioning in the first place. I mean, I've been doing this, I've been doing this whole trans thing for about 10 years now. I'm getting pretty good at it. But yeah, like unlike a lot of trans people, I have put off the surgical side of it because actually hormone therapy and just, you know, just living my best me, it's it's got me by in a way. Um at least on the surface, right? Like I can get by day to day without people screaming in the street and going, "Oh my god, it's a man!" I've been through that. I've been I've been through that, but uh, you know, hormones have have done their magic, at least facially, right? So that's that's something. But the truth is, and maybe lockdown has something to do with this. I spend a lot of time staring into the mirror and thinking oh my god, look at you, what's happened? Another thing about lockdown is it's kind of, you know, aside from the fact of it being a, a horrific tragedy and everything, that kind of just goes without saying, I would say, even though I just had to say it. Just a warning as well, by the way, this is going to be a very, very self-absorbed podcast. It is about me. But I'm hoping that if there's anyone out there who's going through anything similar to what I'm going through, any kind of anxiety or any sort of um, worries or confusion about this topic, I'm hoping that you can get something out of it. I think I'm trying to make something that I feel like I would want to listen to um, in terms of I want to take you on a journey with me from the very beginning to, I, I suppose, the very end. But what is the end? You know, because this is quite, there, there's a lot of possibilities for this. You know, I, I want to take you guys through the consultation. I want to take you guys through um, the day of the surgeries. I want to take you through the healing time. I want to take you through the, the social implications, you know, how how I feel afterwards. I, I want to... I want to I want to take you I want you to be there on my wedding day do you know what I mean I want you to I want you to be there on my deathbed um I want you to I want you to hear my regrets and uh <laughs> I want you I want to hear I want you to hear me denounce my agnosticism on my deathbed um I I think one of the other reasons why I put off doing it for so long is because I've got this romantic idea of myself as being like not just a trans person but like the best one do you know what I mean like I'm like I'm like oh yeah I don't need surgery because I'm fine the way I am and I don't have to be like everybody else and that's not to say that I think any less of anybody else who who does the um who who goes through all the 
the kind of stages. It's more of a sort of kicking out against, I suppose, the the industry of it, right? You know, I, I you know, I've been to the gender clinic. I've I've been assessed. I've been to the psychosexual clinic and and had twenty courses of therapy, etc. And um, there is a part of me that did kind of re- kind of resented that, you know, and I've, and thinks, no, you don't need surgery to 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 be happy or to, or to or to be the kind of person necessarily. Like you don't have to live up to the clinic's expectations to to live a happy and fulfilled life, and that's I think that's true. But also another thing that I think is true is that I really hate my nose. And also, I would really quite like some some proportionate boobs. So, <laughs> so that's I mean that's that's the awkward that's the awkward sort of paradox of it, isn't it? It's like you try and be you try and be progressive, and you try to try to be a modern person, and you try to be you know a good feminist and stuff like that. And then at the end of the day, also, you just you, you want <laughs> I want I want to you know I want to do it, and I'm going to do it. And I'm a very stubborn person, actually. I'm, I, I can be. I can be very headstrong about stuff. I'm very. I can get quite committed to something. When I decide I want to do something, I stick my little claws in, and I, I will. I will go for it. It was the same with transition. It was the same with um, pursuing stand-up comedy. And it is. This is. This is it. This is the next thing, I guess. And I, of course, understand that it is not a surefire fix everything cure um it's going to be a long process still it's going to be um a bit of a wait you know and that's something that I definitely can deal with because I went for quite a few years waiting to get on with my transition and also I do a lot of open mics and gigs for free and I, sometimes I wait a very long time to be paid for gigs so I also, sometimes I'll be waiting at the bus stop for like 40 minutes and I don't even get annoyed at the driver when I get on. I'm, I'm not one of those people that goes, oh, you're late, aren't you? <laughs> no, I respect bus drivers, especially at this time when when they, they, they need our respect. Yeah. So I have realised looking back at the past few months that even though I perhaps hadn't completely 100% made the commitment to get cosmetic surgery in terms of actually phoning the clinic and booking in the consultation like I've done now. I feel like subconsciously I I was I was sort of like prepping myself for it and I can tell that by a few different things that I I did. The first thing that I did to kind of will myself, you know, you know, rev myself up to do it is I got a nose piercing. Um, and that doesn't sound like a big deal. Um, that's sort of the kind of thing that you're meant to do when you're about 17, isn't it? And you're just kind of doing it to go, oh, fuck you, dad. <laughs> look at my, look at my nose piercing. Yeah. What do you think about that? Has it blown your mind, mum and dad? Um, but I chose to do it when I was 29, which is, I don't know, you could say is a bit sad, but hey, it looks good. A lot of people said to me, wow, you know. I sort of didn't notice that you had one because it just looks so right. It suits you. And that's what I'm hoping will happen um, with my cosmetic surgeries. So, yeah, one day I woke up and I thought, yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get the the nose piercing that I have always secretly wanted. I'm just going to go and do it. Um, That's kind of how I operate. I think I kind of stew on something for a very, very long time. I think about it intently. I don't tell anybody about it I just think it through and through and through and then one day I just decide and it's it, so it feels quite spur of the moment and it alarms everybody around me <laughs> but actually I've been thinking about it for a very very long time that's what I did with my transition you know I was, kept it secret for a very very long time didn't tell anyone how I was feeling became very adept and good at um hiding my true nature so to speak you know not not being honest about who I was and then one day I was just like oh by the way guys uh, this is what I've been thinking about my whole life and um, how can you not be supportive of me even though I've never mentioned it at all luckily the nose piercing thing was a lot less drastic of a change 
And people weren't really bothered. They were more just like, oh, yeah, that's cool. You you go for it. You go, girl. You go get a nose piercing. You do that. And so I did. I, I, I ventured on the bus on my own, all on my own. I've got I've got my own bus pass, got my own travel card. And I went into Bromley. Uh, just shout out big up to Bromley, where I spent a lot of my teenage times um, hanging around the shopping mall. I was a bit of a mall rat, having McDonald's and... Uh, you know, looking looking in shops and not buying anything. Um, and I went there, and I went to this piercing parlor. Is that is that what they're called? The old the old piercing parlor, uh, <laughs> the piercing saloon. And I went. They are kind of like saloons, actually. Sometimes they do have sort of like wooden, well, not not wooden doors. Most doors are wood. Um, what they called, uh, you know. Oh, uh, saloon doors. That's what they're called. <laughs> the clue is in the name saloon. Um, anyway, I went in there. It's it's a place that has been there since I was a kid. Actually, it's very strange. It's, it's it's where it's funny because it's where everyone would go, and it was considered kind of like it was considered the trashy place. Do you know what I mean? Like, not, I mean, I don't think that's fair. I don't. I don't know if they've got a trashy reputation. I mean, they're still open after all this time. So surely, isn't that enough to say? that they can't be that bad they would have been shut down otherwise but it was very much the place where teenagers would go and get pierced you know it wasn't it's um, it's not like claire's accessories level they use a needle and stuff like that but it, it was uh i guess it was considered the basic bitch uh piercing parlor you know all the cool people actually went to like some place in camden where they pierce your nose with a a stingray's uh, tail. Uh, they've got the stingray that killed Steve Irwin. They've got it um, preserved, and they take it out and they they pierce you with that. But yeah, I went I went there, and it was kind of a bit like a pilgrimage, I suppose. It kind of felt like that. Is that too grand to say? It was kind of like I was uh, I was trying to make up for lost teenage time. You know, all the, all those times I walked past it and I wanted to go in there and 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 have it done, and my own self consciousness stopped me from doing it. Now. 20 years later I've gone back and I've uh, I've asked them to stick a needle through my nose and they did it and do you know what it was it was more of like an endurance thing I was I mean I know it's not a big deal but I think just that that one gesture of being like oh actually do you know what I can do this I can I can have some kind of low level uh body modification done to me um See, the crazy thing is, is that actually, if you look at me now and then you look at me from, say, 10 years ago, I look so different. I have changed an awful lot. And that is through predominantly through hormone therapy. But the thing about hormones is, is that the change is gradual. That's sort of like the point of them. Um, it's so gradual that it's it it feels natural. I know there's a lot of people who will say, there's nothing natural about that. You, you were born a man and you'll die a bleeding man. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, because it takes so long for them to have effects and because the effects present themselves slowly th and through growth, you, you know, it feels right. It's normal. It, there's something, there's something quite sort of safe about that in a way, I feel. So, you know, you wake up one day, you look the same as you did yesterday, but then you look at a photo of yourself from six months ago and you go, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm growing up. Oh, I'm going to be a beautiful woman one day. Um, but unfortunately, it has its sort of limit and you get to a point where you think, oh, but actually, I have the breasts of a <laughs> of a of a small dog. <laughs> I need <laughs> I need um. I need something proportionate for my body. So yes, here's the secret. The secret's out. Um, the surgeries that I'm going to have are, I am I just, I want two. I just want two surgeries right now. And those are as follows. I want a breast augmentation surgery. That is where they put some silicone in your chest and they make your boobs look big. And, you know, spoiler warning, I do have some, I do have some breast tissue, you know, hormones have, have given me that by the grace of God above, I have something. Yeah. So that will be good for giving me a little bit of space for them to stretch out the skin is what I assume they do. Um, I think they use like a mangle or they use a series of pegs uh, to do it. And 
I think when they put the water balloon in, um, it's like a super strong water balloon and it's not filled with water. It's filled with jelly, I think. Uh, lime round trees jelly, which is always my favourite. Um, other jellies are available. Uh, you don't have to get round trees jelly. So yeah, I want that. And I don't want anything preposterous, you know. I'm not going for any world records. Um, if I wanted a world record, um, I'd go full on sort of like lizard person um and i'd be in that cool page in the middle of the guinness world records where the lizard no i'd be the peg person i reckon you know the peg person in the in the in the guinness world records that person had all the pegs on their face i remember i always used to think i could get that many pegs on my face easy easy i'm sure i have done in in darker days you know some days you wake up and you think i'm going to give that a go Unfortunately, there's no adjudicators around, so sometimes it's difficult to to fully get the get the official record. <laughs> but I want something. Um, I don't want you know. I don't want them small. I think that would be a waste of time because um, they're already small. So I might as well, you know, go big or go home, as they say. Or well, hopefully, go big and then go home. I don't want to be stuck in the hospital forever. Um, <laughs> It's a bad sign if you don't get to go home. But yeah, I, I do want them to be proportionate, you know, because this is the thing as well. As as a trans woman, um, I do have a bigger body. Uh, you know, I've got broader shoulders than most. I, you know, I mean, I'm not I'm not lurch. Do you know what I mean? But I I just feel like I need something to complement um, the rest of my body shape. That's the main thing. They're, they're, they're anxieties of mine, you know, where I look in the mirror and I think, yeah, I kind of look kind of right, but also not, you know, I look a bit wonky. Um, and yeah, and here's the thing. I know that a lot of like women have these issues where, you know, trans or not, you know, they, you know, a lot of non-trans women have these problems and they think, you know, they dislike parts of their body and, and um, not everybody can get surgery and, it's one of those things, isn't it? That sometimes people have to live with things. Um, but again, I'm aware of that. Um, it's something that I do think about sometimes. But on the other hand, there's part of my brain that says, yeah, but you want this, so <laughs> you should just do it. Um, so yeah, I'm going <laughs> to. Uh, I, I, want, I want them. A lot of this is going to come down to that. I wish I could spin some kind of like, elaborate reason for like a better reason for why I want it you know like oh I need it because uh like actually I need to have my breasts done because what if I was in a plane crash and um there were no buoyancy aids around surely I would need something to help keep me buoyant in the Pacific Ocean I don't know why I'm obsessing so much about flight uh planes and stuff I'm not due to go on a plane anytime soon um <laughs> Apparently, you're not supposed to go on an aeroplane after having breast augmentation surgery, but I don't know if that's actually true because a lot of people go abroad to do it um, and they fly. As presumably, I, I don't think they they don't get the the Staten Island ferry over to um, Staten Island and they don't wave to the Statue of Liberty as they as, as they go like it's the bleed in nineteen nineteen. Um, Okay, so the other surgery that I want to get is a rhinoplasty, which I always think is a horrible name for it. Um, it's a nose job, basically. I don't like the term rhinoplasty because sometimes when I look in the mirror and I look at my nose and how big it is, I do think, yeah, you do look a bit like a rhinoceros. But I don't think you need to remind people of that in the actual name of the procedure. Although I suppose that is a very good marketing technique if every time you see it, it, you're reminded of a rhino um it is gonna gonna push you into into probably getting it done i do feel like a nose job is something that is quite um i think it's one of the surgeries that is most considered like a vein surgery like here's the thing getting breast augmentation for me is something that i can get away with in terms of socially because i think when you're trans um i think trans women are actually sort of encouraged in society and are um celebrated for getting surgery and i think that's one of the things that 
possibly put me off doing it for so long because I kind of resented that idea of, you know, you always get like, yeah, you go girl, live your best life, you know, but at the end of the day, you're thinking, well, actually, I'm scared of, of get, going under surgery. And also, I don't, as I said before, I don't think you necessarily need to, to, to be, to be valid and, and to be, um, to be living that life. But I think the upside of that is that you're less likely to be accused of, of just out and out vanity because, you know, you've got this additional thing. It's like gender dysphoria, like you hate yourself or, or, um, you know, I just feel like I was born in the wrong body, uh, which is not necessarily sort of like really the truth. It's, you know, sorry guys, it's just sort of like a lie that we tell you to, um, to help you understand is it's I, I would say that that description is is like it's like an Aesop's fable or it's, it's it's a metaphor you know it's a metaphor let's call it a metaphor that's a nice way of saying it other than like an out and out lie it's a nice little story that helps make sense out of something that even we don't fully understand right um but a nose job to me I'm I'm strangely fine with Maybe that's because I haven't looked up many videos on it. Like I haven't really watched a lot of nose job procedures. I don't really want to see it. I just want to go to sleep and I just want to wake up with a smaller nose. Because the thing is, the nose is the direct center of the face. So people look at it a lot, you know, and when you look at your face in the mirror, at least I feel like I do, my eyes go directly to the nose and I see every flaw, every problem with it. Um, firstly, my nose is very big. Uh, I have a beak. I have, I have, a, I have like a like a big nose. I've seen bigger, but it's still pretty big. Um, and it's one of those noses where, when I was at school, people would say to me, "You know, where are you from? You know, what? Who are you? You know, what are you? Are you a bird? <laughs> do you do you come from a family of uh, of eagles?" Um, and I think I really do think that getting my nose done will really feminize my face. I think it's that one central thing that will help. Like I don't, I don't mind my forehead. I think it's fine. Um, I've actually recently changed my hairstyle. I had a fringe for the longest time, you know, like a, as Americans call it, like my bangs, I had some bangs, um, but I've recently got rid of them and I've, I've now got like a little curtain and I, I, I'm letting the world see my forehead for what it is. I've, I've definitely got I don't have a lot of self-love, but I've definitely got a lot of self-love for my forehead. You know, if you don't love your forehead, how in the hell are you going to love anybody else's forehead? Can I get an amen sister? And my chin, I'm happy with my chin. My chin's fine. I don't have a very large chin. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm chin neutral. Um, I've got an androgynous chin. My chin is non-gender specific. I've got, I've got a, a non-binary chin. But my nose, I definitely have a large nose. And also, I've got a bent nose. And I, I feel like I've had a bent nose for quite a long time. But a lot of people would ask me, they say, you know, why have you got a bent nose? Like, they don't say it as bluntly as that. But in my life, I have had people ask me, you know, what happened to your nose? And I'm not 100% sure, right? Because I'm pretty sure my nose was slightly bent. Um, before I was in year 10. But when I was in year 10, I did have somebody headbutt me in the face very, very hard. Um, I'll tell you the story of when I got headbutted. So when I was in year 10, I went to an all boys school, which is uh, was fun. It was nice, nice time that I had there, as you can, as you can imagine. Um, and when I used to come home, I used to come home through this lovely, quaint little area called Grove Park in South East London, which is to say that it's rough there is like saying it's like saying sandpaper is a little bit coarse it's 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 rough it's rough there um but nonetheless you know it couldn't be avoided i had to go there and i remember so me and my friends we would go and buy chicken and chips and we would eat it as we would wait for the bus and then we get the bus home and then have our dinner so it's like two dinners um, I miss those two dinner days. I have like, I basically eat half a dinner now. Um, <laughs> so as you could say, I've changed a lot, but anyway, so we used to get chicken and chips. And I remember we were standing at this bus stop eating said chicken and chips, and we were approached by, um, some bigger boys, <laughs> Miss Patson. And, um, 
so there were these big boys that came over. <laughs> Hello, sailor. <laughs> Hello, boys. And they, <laughs> in my mind, they're like 40 years old. But probably at the time, because I was only in year 10, I think they were most probably about 18 or 19. And they sort of surrounded us and they said to my friend, they were like, they were doing that thing, you know, where they go like, oh, excuse me, mate. <laughs> um, See, I need to phone my mum and uh, I've got no phone um, or money. So can I borrow your phone so I can phone my mum and I'll give it back? And um, my friend handed this boy his phone and I said to my friend but I said it out loud I said why are you doing that and we all know why he was doing that he was doing that because he was scared and because he probably knew the consequences of not doing that but then I said don't do that he's blatantly going to steal it and they all looked at me and the largest of the group came up to me and he didn't say anything. He just very, very politely um, head-butted me in the face, directly in, in, the, in the face. And uh, it didn't hurt. I didn't feel anything. Actually, it was really a weird sensation. I've not really had anything like it since. I just completely blacked out, just, just went, compl everything went dark. Um, and when I opened my eyes, my white school shirt was uh, completely red. It was covered in blood. And um, they was they hadn't left. They were still there. I got the impression that they were going to continue harming me. But luckily, an old man exited his vehicle and he kind of like shooed them away like like a pig, like pigeons. And they went off um, with my friend's phone. Oh, and I forgot to state the little detail is before they headbutted me, um, they they knocked the box of chicken out of my hand in a funny way. Like they hit it underneath and it flew up in the sky. And I remember finding that funny at the time. I, I, I've, I've had a few moments in my life where I've behaved in a way like that that is not sensible, right? But it's kind of like a nihilistic sort of like, I don't care what happens to me kind of thing. Although, if I'm honest, I didn't really want to be head-butted. <laughs> um, but I was. And I suppose why I'm telling you this is, is just because it's not quite as black and white as it, it's not just... A cosmetic thing. I certainly do have a slightly disfigured nose and I do think that is a result of it but in full transparency um, I, I also am willing to admit that the reason why I want to have it done is because I want it to be smaller and I want to have a more feminine face. Um, I'm just I'm just trying to give you the full sort of picture here right? So what's next? Um, my birthday isn't for a couple of weeks. Um, that's when I have my consultation. So what I'm saying is my consultation isn't for a couple of weeks. Um, also, I'm aware that we're in lockdown at the moment. So even though I can have this web consultation, I don't imagine that the ball will really get rolling until we're at least allowed to go like to the shops or whatever um i guess a good rule of thumb is if you're not allowed to go bowling you're definitely not allowed to go and have um a rhinoplasty i'm guessing um one cool thing that they said to me is they said that you can have the rhinoplasty and the aug breast augmentation at the same time they just they just do it all at once like a sort of two for one deal not in terms of price um but in terms of time so i guess it makes sense if you think about it because they don't want to put you under um what do you call it uh what, what do you what do they call it when they put you under let's just let's just leave it at that they don't want to put you under yeah that that would do that's good enough that's that's one way of saying it so you can just stick with that jen um they don't want to put you under more than once because obviously it makes you go a bit do lally doesn't it um, I don't think that's the only concern. I think also it can kind of fuck your brain up. <laughs> but so yeah, so everything everything's kind of up in the air at the moment and I'm aware that there are more pressing and important things than my little nose job or my little boob job. Um, but you know what? That's what this podcast's about. So, that, so I'm going to stop apologising for it. That's, that's what this is about. That's why you're here. That's what you're listening to. So I think what I'll do in the next episode is I'll probably have a chat with some of my family um, some of my close friends 
sort of about their opinions on my choice to undergo these surgeries and maybe their own experiences. I, I would really like to talk to some people who have had cosmetic surgery. Um, whether their experience be good or bad, I'd like to I'd like to hear from you. So if that's something you were willing to do, um, you can send me an email at jenivescomedy at gmail.com or a tweet at jenivescomedian. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you don't feel comfortable talking to me on the podcast, that's absolutely fine. You can just send me a message um, and I'll read it out or or maybe you can give me some advice or whatever. Um, I'd like this to be partly interactive, I think. I, I, I really... Because, you know, as I said, I do have my own reservations. I've got my own fears about this. And, and I realise that I'm very much at the start of the journey here. And so I would like to talk to somebody who's a bit more experienced on the subject. I don't know, maybe you can help put my mind at ease. Maybe you can... Or maybe you can scare the living shit out of me. Let's 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 see how it goes. Thank you very much for listening to the first episode of the Pretty Ugly podcast. Um... I really do appreciate it. If you've enjoyed it, then feel free to rate it or leave me a comment or whatever. Or just uh, just give me a follow on the old Twitter, at uh, Jen Ives Comedian. Um, I do a lot of, uh, you know, I do a lot of crazy, a lot of crazy tweets on there. Um, and I've got a, f- a few other projects on the go that I don't know you might be interested in. Or you might not. You could, you could... There's also other people on Twitter that you could follow if, if you're not doing it. There's Stephen Fry. Um, he's he's quite big on there. Or there's uh, Barack Obama you could follow. He's He's got quite a few followers already. I don't think he needs any more. Why don't you support someone a little less mainstream, yeah, a little bit more niche like me? Um, you can also check out my website, genives.net, where all my uh, comedy dates used to be and also uh, some other projects that I, that I do. So have a nice week and I will see you guys next Tuesday. Bye-bye.